Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this uh, lecture, we will be uh, discussing uh, classical analytical methods. In analytical chemistry, uh, among other analytical techniques, classical analytical methods have been extensively utilizing in the in the laboratory of chemistry and uh, other uh, related fields uh, in different processes uh, such as uh, precipitation uh, extraction of different components and distillation process to uh, to get uh, the pure uh, solvent or pure reagent from the mixture uh, these uh, classical analytical methods uh, includes uh, different uh, uh, phenomena such as uh, the differences in the color order and the differences in the melting point boiling point radioactivity to 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 identify a class of compound uh, in a given sample and after uh, identifying these uh, uh, elements in a given sample the quantitation quantitative analysis uh, uh, was uh, also used to calculate the concentration of uh, the targeted analyte in a given sample okay before going to start the classical analytical methods uh, we are uh, just uh, are going to discuss uh, what is analytical chemistry so analytical chemistry is a branch of science is a branch of chemistry that deals with the analytical characterization of a matter that's a analytical characterization of matter of a given sample any sample you are holding uh, in a lab uh, that uh, needs uh, its characterization its uh, uh, through different analytical methods so this uh, uh, branch of science uh, uh, have been uh, this branch of science has been utilized for separation identification and quantification of uh, targeted analyte in the uh, in the in the given sample which is under investigation uh, so uh, these processes of uh, uh, separation identification and quantification may constitute the whole characterization of the matter or these processes may be coupled with other techniques in some cases uh, when required so in analytical chemistry when we are going to characterize a sample uh, basically two or three processes basic processes are involved in this uh, analytical chemistry the first one is the isolation of uh, the targeted analyte a class of uh, a class of compound a, a group of compound uh, was uh, isolated from the sample this is the first step after that uh, the that uh, uh, after that the qualitative analysis was performed qualitative analysis will be performed uh, to identify uh, the targeted analyte in a sample when the, these targeted analytes are uh, identified in a given sample then the concentration the concentration of that analyte is a uh, is a question on how we can calculate the concentration of that analyte so we will use a uh, different uh, quantitative analysis to determine the concentration of a given sample uh, the, the concentration of analyte in a given sample for analytical characterization of a sample uh, principal steps uh, uh, which are given in this slide uh, have been uh, reported to uh, utilize uh, number one sampling when you are uh, going to uh, in the field in the industry or uh, any food sample any food sample uh, the area which you are working you are going to uh, collect the representative sample from the population after getting the sample uh, there uh, the samples need a field pre-treatment and after uh, the sample pre-treatment these samples uh, will be brought into the laboratory uh, where uh, uh, some basic uh, 
processes uh, will be involved such as washing uh, to remove the associated debris from the sample and uh, after drying these uh, after washing these samples uh, may, will be dried if necessary if uh, necessary and uh, then laboratory assays will be carried out uh, after that uh, different uh, calculations uh, will be performed and uh, at the end uh, of this uh, whole characterization the results will be reported in different forms and different concentrations okay if you want to know uh, about the brief history of analytical chemistry so the first instrumental analysis was uh, the frame flame emissive spectrometry uh, which was developed by uh, the two scientists you can see in this picture which is robert bunsen and uh, the kirchhoff uh, these are the scientists who discovered uh, rubidium and the cesium in 1960s and after that uh, in instrumental analysis uh, major developments uh, were uh, uh, brought uh, were major developments were done uh, in this uh, instrumental analysis uh, which took place in uh, which took place after 1900 and uh, if you see around uh, in your laboratory if you find uh, the hplc that high performance liquid chromatography and uh, the gc uh, the gas chromatography these state of the art instruments was developed uh, after 1900 uh, and then after that these uh, state of the state of the art uh, uh, separation techniques and instrumental analysis and analytical techniques have uh, been utilizing in different uh, uh, fields of sciences uh, which include the forensic sciences environmental and uh, in, uh, environmental uh, and industrial application along with this uh, these analytical chemistry uh, is uh, uh, being used in uh, different pharmaceutical industries so characterization of uh, uh, matter includes different uh, uh, methods such as classical methods and instrumental methods so these uh, classical methods includes uh, the precipitation extraction and distillation uh, these methods are used in the laboratories in, a, in uh, as, a, as a routine processes uh, to to uh, characterize a matter uh, for a qualitative analysis we are use we are using the differences in the color differences in the order in the melting point and the boiling point radioactivity uh, after this uh, when we identify a compound in a given sample then the quantitative analysis uh, will be performed to calculate the actual concentration of the targeted analyte in a given sample so instrumental methods includes different phenomena such as absorption uh, and um, absorption and emission of light these two phenomena you can see the atomic uh, absorption spectrophotometer and atomic emission spectrophotometer similarly conductance i mean you can see this conductance phenomena in uh, uh, different uh, instruments uh, electrode potential or fluorescence fluorescence uh, is a phenomena which can be used in uh, uh, different instruments and similarly mass to charge ratio and uh, these are the phenomena which are the basis of uh, different instru different instruments that instruments th these instruments are uh, being used to characterize a given sample Okay, when we talk about uh, the qualitative uh, analysis in the classical analytical methods, so these qualitative analysis uh, actually deals with the uh, presence or absence of uh, the targeted compound, and uh, for the identification of uh, different uh, different class of compound, we need to perform some basic uh, chemical test or flame test. So these are uh, basically qualitative tests so chemical tests are performed like acid test uh, uh, is uh, routinely performed in the laboratory for the gold presence similarly castlemere test is used to uh, identify as any sample of blood any blood in the sample 
and see uh, similarly lysine test is performed to identify the halogen compound nitrogen compound and the sulfur compound in an organic compound in an organic sample along with this chemical test uh, this uh, there is another uh, qualitative test that's a flame test this is used to detect a certain class of compound and as you can see uh, i have uh, mentioned here three uh, characteristic flame of uh, three different compounds three different elements if you want to uh, uh, perform a flame test of arsenic arsenic will uh, be giving you a blue flame similarly if you are going uh, to uh, identify a boron in a sample and then you perform a flame test the this boron will burn with a bright green flame and similarly if you are interested to identify and the lithium come lithium element in your in your sample uh, and then you and then you burn the sample it will give you a crimson red flame which indicate the presence of uh, lithium so a lithium element in your sample so these are the qualitative test which are routinely performed in the chemistry labs for the identification of uh, different elements Okay, after the identification of uh, uh, elements in, 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 the, in the sample, uh, their quantitation will be required. I mean, how will you uh, quantitate, how will you perform the quality, quantitative analysis? Then you need to perform uh, uh, one of the following assays, which is uh, the, the major category. There are two major categories. Number one, gravimetric analysis and the second one is volumetric analysis in gravimetric analysis we can perform the precipitation gravity thermogravi th thermogravimetric analysis and electrogravimetric analysis and the last one uh, which falls in the category of uh, gravimetric analysis that's a particulate gravimetric analysis so these are uh, the quant quantitative analysis uh, in the category of gravimetric analysis there is another class of uh, uh, test which is uh, volumetric analysis methods these uh, uh, volume this volumetric analysis method includes acid base titration redox titration precipitation titration and complexometric titration by these uh, uh, we, you can use one of uh, or one or more than one uh, and tools to quantitate uh, or to calculate the concentration of the analyte in a given sample. In classical analytical method, uh, if you want to uh, calculate the concentration of an analyte, then you need to perform specific uh, uh, classical analytical tools. Uh, and one of them is uh, precipitation gravimetry. So this uh, precipitation gravimetric analysis include uh, a set of protocols that are used to determine the concentration of an, an of an analyte based on its mass so gravimetric the precipitation gravimetric analysis is one of the most uh, accurate and precise method for the quantitative analysis so this gravimetric uh, precipitation gravimetric refers to the measurement of uh, uh, the concentration of an analyte on the basis of the weight in gravimetric uh, in precipitation gravimetric analysis the amount of analyte is calculated by measuring uh, the mass of uh, a pure substance containing targeted analyte and uh, the, a simple example of this precipitation gravimetric analysis is uh, the measurement of the solid suspended particle in a given sample a known volume of uh, the water is uh, allowed to filter uh, and uh, through this filter paper uh, the water will be passed out and uh, the insoluble residues will be uh, will be uh, stopped by the filter paper and uh, these uh, solid particles will be collected and uh, the difference in the weight of the sample uh, will be used to uh, to to perform 
the estimation of uh, the suspended solids in the particle in most of the cases an light uh, must be uh, converted to a solid uh, solid particles by precipitation with an appropriate reagent which is named as uh, precipitant so uh, when you are going to mix uh, uh, the precipitant and and the, and the sample uh, there will be there will be uh, a, a reaction uh, which is uh, going to occur uh, and uh, in in the in in the in the uh, in the end the reaction when the reaction come uh, i mean reaction completed uh, the formation of the precipitate uh, uh, will be appeared and these precipitate will be settled down uh, at the bottom of the uh, container and these precipitate will be collected by a filtration processes a filtration process and uh, after filtering uh, filtration these uh, insoluble residues these precipitate will be washed out washed away with the suitable solvent uh, in most of the cases we are using distilled deionized water to uh, to wash the precipitate and after uh, this these uh, washing is done to uh, remove uh, any uh, uh, impurity in it uh, if 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 there is uh, uh, if there is any impurity the washing is to, uh, washing is the process uh, to wash away that impurity after washing these uh, precipitates will be dried and uh, to remove the traces of moisture uh, in the sample in the precipitate and after uh, removing in the traces of moisture from the sample these uh, uh, these precipitate will be uh, weighed and uh, the amount of the analyte in the original sample can then be calculated from the sample from the mass of the precipitate and its chemical composition okay gravimetric analysis ke andar kuch certain steps hain jinko humne follow karna hai kuch कुछ टर्म्स हैं जो हमें पता होना चाहिए सबसे पहले जब आप ग्रेविमेट्रिक एनालिसिस की तरफ आते हैं यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड कि व्हाट इज सॉल्यूशन सॉल्यूशन बेसिकली इज अ कम्बिनेशन ऑफ सॉल्यूट एंड अ सॉल्वेंट तो सॉल्यूट कोई भी सब्सटेंस जो आम तौर पे यूजुअली हम कहते हैं कि पाउडर फॉर्म में होता है और लेस क्वांटिटी में होता है और जबकि जो सॉल्वेंट है उसे आम तौर पे लिक्विड में लिया जाता है लिक्विड समझते हैं आम तौर पे और उसकी जो क्वांटिटी है वो ज़्यादा होती है जब हम सॉल्यूट और सॉल्वेंट को मिक्स करते हैं तो वी विल हैव अ सॉल्यूशन तो सॉल्यूशन के अंदर हम सॉल्यूशन के साथ एक एक पैरेलल टर्म होती है जिसे हम कहते हैं अमाउंट और कंसनट्रेशन इन दोनों का भी हमें फ़र्क पता पता हमें पता चलना चाहिए कि अमाउंट किसे कहते हैं और कंसनट्रेशन किसे कहते हैं अमाउंट जो भी वेट क्वांटिटी है लाइक एक ग्राम है दो ग्राम है तीन ग्राम आई मीन टेन ग्राम्स ट्वेंटी ग्राम्स जो भी अमाउंट जिसको आप वज़न कर सकें वो अमाउंट कहलाती है अब वो जो अमाउंट आपने ली है अब उसे आप किसी ख़ास स्पेसिफिक वॉलीम में अगर आप डाल देते हैं तो वो कंसनट्रेशन बन जाती है लाइक like, आप कहते हैं मैंने वन ग्राम सोडियम क्लोराइड लेके हंड्रेड एम वाटर में डाल दिया तो वो जो हमारे पास एक सोल्यूशन बनेगा उसी कंसनट्रेशन होगी कि हंड्रेड एम के अंदर वन ग्राम सोडियम क्लोराइड है तो वो कंसनट्रेशन कहलाती है जब आप एक अमाउंट लेते हैं वो वेट क्वांटिटी होगी और जब उस वेट क्वान्टिटी को आप एक स्पेसिफिक वॉलीम ऐड कर देंगे तो वो आपके पास कंसनट्रेशन बन जाती है तो इसी इन इन चीज़ों को समझने के साथ साथ आपने सोल्यूशन को प्रिपेयर करना है बाय टेकिंग अ सूटेबल क्वांटिटी ऑफ सल्यूट विच विल बी डिजॉल्व इन सॉल्वेंट और इन दोनों का जो मिक्सचर होगा वो हमारे पास एक सोल्यूशन की फॉर्म में आएगा तो वी विल प्रिपेयर अ सोल्यूशन एट द फर्स्ट स्टेप ऑफ ग्रेविमेट्रिक एनालिसिस देन वी विल एड प्रेसिपिटेटिंग एजेंट जो प्रेसिपिटेटिंग एजेंट का मकसद क्या होगा कि जो सोल्यूशन के अंदर हमारा टारगेटेड एनालाइट है उसके साथ वो रिएक्ट करके और आपको प्रेसिपिटेट बना के देगा वो प्रेसिपिटेट्स को हम वो प्रेसिपिटेट जो हैं वो अंडर द फोर्स ऑफ ग्रेविटी वो उस बॉटम पे इकट्ठी होना शुरू हो जाती हैं फिर हम डाइजेशन करते हैं आई मीन उस जो हमारे पास प्रेसिपिटेट होते हैं उनके डाइजेशन की जाती है 
और फिर डाइजेशन के बाद उन प्रेसिपिटेट को हम आइसोलेट करते हैं जैसा कि आपको पता है फिल्ट्रेशन फिल्टर फिल्टर पेपर के जरिए से फनल को यूज़ करते हुए आप सोल्यूशन को उस फिल्टर पेपर में से गुजारते हैं तो फिल्टर पेपर में से जो जो सॉल्वेंट होता है वो उसमें से पास आउट हो जाता है और जो प्रेसिपिटेट होते हैं जो कि इन सॉल्यूबल रेजिड यूज होते हैं वो प्रेसिपिटेट जो है फिल्टर पेपर के ऊपर आ जाते हैं उन फिल्टर पेपर के ऊपर के ऊपर बचने वाले प्रेसिपिटेट को हम वॉश करते हैं वॉश करने के साथ हम उनको ड्राई करने के लिए हॉट एयर अवन आमतौर पे इस्तेमाल किया जाता है तो उसमें उसका टेम्परेचर जो है वो अबाउट 60, 50, 50, 60, 65 के दरमियान रखा जाता है ताकि आपकी जो प्रोडक्ट है जो प्रेसिपिटेट है वो डिस्ट्रॉय ना हो जाए बर ना हो जाए तो उसको भी आपने ऑब्जर्व करना है कि हाफ एन आवर समाइम इनफ होता है समटाइम ज़्यादा टाइम देना पड़ता है अगर उसमें मॉइस्चर ज़्यादा है तो ये ड्राॅइंग जो है इसको आप ड्राइंग करने के बाद जो आपके पास प्रेसिपिटेट बचते हैं उसको आप वे कर लेते हैं बाई यूजिंग एनालिटिकल बैलेंस तो वे करने के बाद आप कैलकुलेट करके जो भी कंपाउंड है उसकी आप कंसनट्रेशन उसकी आप अमाउंट निकाल सकते हैं ओके इन प्रेसिपिटेशन ग्रामीट्रिक एनालिसिस वी यूजुअली कलेक्ट द प्रेसिपिटेट्स एज एज अ प्रोडक्ट दीज रिजल्टिंग प्रेसिपिटेट मस्ट बी इन सॉल्यूबल इन द मदर लिक्वर सो एज टू मिनिमाइज द लॉस इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ फिल्ट्रेशन एंड वॉशिंग एंड द फिजिकल स्टेट ऑफ दिस प्रेसिपिटेट मस्ट बी सच लाइक दैट कैन ईजिली बी आइसोलेटेड बाई फिल्ट्रेशन आई मीन दीज पार्ट दिस प्रेसिपिटेट द साइज ऑफ द प्रेसिपिटेट मस्ट बी ऑप्टिमम दैट कैन नॉट बी पास थ्रू द फिल्टर पेपर the stability of the precipitate at room temperature is very important and uh, and the resulting precipitate must be free of contamination so the precipitates must consist of large particles that cannot clog and uh, pass through the filter paper during filtration process so we with these uh, basic properties of the uh precipitate these precipitation gravimetric analysis has some advantages uh, which includes uh, this uh, precipitation method this precipitation gravimetric analysis is uh, very accurate and precise method to uh, to calculate the concentration of analyte and uh, the possible sources of errors can be checked uh and uh, this uh, precipitation gravimetric analysis is a obsolete method and uh, in uh, other uh, volumetric analysis or other uh, methods it uh, uh, is relatively inexpensive the second important uh, quanti quantitative analysis uh, among uh, classical and analytical methods this is the thermogravimetric analysis uh, in thermogravimetric analysis Uh, a thermal analysis is uh, performed in which uh, the mass of the sample is measured uh, along with the changes in the temperature uh, so when the temperature changes the sample uh, uh, changes the concentration of different analyte changes along with the temperature so this uh, measurement uh, uh, provides information about some physical phenomena as well as some chemical uh, phenomena this physical phenomena includes the phase transition absorption adsorption and desorption these are the phenomena which uh, are involved in the physical uh, and chemical and the chemical phenomena such as chemical chemical adsorption and the thermal de decomposition these physical and chemical uh, phenomena occurred in thermogravimetric analysis and uh, this uh, thermogravimetric analysis is performed in a thermogravimetric analyzer uh, these uh, uh, thermogravimetric an analyzer consist of a precision uh, balance with a sample pan located inside a furnace with a programmable uh, control temperature the temperature is generally increased at constant rate to incur a thermal reaction the thermal reaction may occur under a variety of atmospheric uh, atmospheres including in ambient temperature 
I mean, you can perform this gravimetric analysis in vacuum. You can use inert gases, uh, oxidizing or reducing gases, corrosive gases. These all the gases can be used to uh, to perform the thermogravimetric analysis. So, in other words, you can use different atmosphere. I repeat, uh, ambient uh, air, vacuum, inert gases, oxidizing or reducing gases or corrosive gases can be utilized in thermogravimetric analysis. Okay, uh, then different, a variety of pressures can also be employed such as high vacuum, high pressure, constant pressure or a controlled pressure. So these pressure values can be varied in thermogravimetric analysis. The thermogravimetric uh, data collected from this uh, thermal reaction is compiled and uh, then the mass of the analyte and the temperature or a time. These three parameters are uh, in our hand. We can, we can plot them uh, by taking uh, the mass on the y-axis and uh, the temperature or time on the x-axis, then we will have a thermogravimetric analysis curve. So this uh, thermogravimetric analysis curve can be used for the material characterization th uh, through analysis of characteristic decomposition pattern which occur in thermogravimetric analysis. So this uh, thermogravimetric analysis uh, is very uh, useful technique for the study of polymer uh, materials such as thermoplastics, thermosets, uh, elastomers, composite material, plastic films, fiber, coating and paints. Okay, we can classify uh, this uh, uh, thermogravimetric analysis into three categories. Uh, which uh, uh, can be named as uh, isothermal or static thermogravimetric analysis. The second one is the Ghazi static uh, uh, thermometric uh, thermogravimetric analysis. And the third one is dynamic thermogravimetric analysis. In isothermal or static thermal, uh, thermal uh, gravimetric analysis, the sample weight is recorded as a function of time. We are going to fix a temperature at a constant value and uh, uh, we will record the weight of the sample as a function of time. We will uh, be uh, focusing on the uh, sample weight by considering uh, the temperature at a constant value. So in this uh, condition, we can name this category as isothermal or static thermogravimetric analysis. The second category that is Ghazi statistic uh, uh, gravimetric uh, analysis. In this uh, technique, uh, the sample is heated to a constant weight each of the series of increasing temperature. In this, uh, we are not going to fix a temperature. We are going to increase the temperature of the analysis until we got a constant weight of the sample. So the third category in the thermogravimetric analysis is a dynamic thermogravimetric analysis. In this sample is heated in an environment whose temperature is changed in a linear manner. I mean, you are going uh, to increase the temperature uh, in uh, gradually in a, a perfect equal interval of time and you will uh, be able, you will be able to, uh, to, uh, to record the sample weight and it's uh, and then after these uh, three uh, uh, thermo thermogravimetric analysis you can you can perform one or uh, more than one assays uh, to characterize the analytical uh, sample the third important uh, quantitative analysis uh, which is uh, uh, usually performed in the laboratory to calculate the concentration of an analyte is electrogravimetric analysis. This electrogravimetric analysis uh, is performed to separate and uh, quantify the ions present in a substance. These uh, uh, ions usually are metal ions. So in, gra in electrogravimetric analysis, a sample uh, is uh, electrolyzed. The analyte solution is electrolyzed 
after electrolysis this uh, electrochemical reduction causes the analyte to be deposited on the cathode terminal and the mass of the cathode is determined before and after the experiment and the difference in 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 that value is used to calculate the mass of analyte in the sample under investigation so when you are going to perform the uh, analysis you uh, will be required to calculate the mass of the cathode and after electrolysis uh, uh, the analyte will be deposited on the cathode so after uh, the experiment you will be uh, you will be needed to to again weigh, uh, weigh the uh, mass uh, again weigh the cathode a terminal and the, the net the net weight of uh, the net weight at the cathode terminal will give you the yield of the analyte which is deposited on the cathode terminal so uh, uh, if you are interested to perform the electro uh, gravimetric analysis then you should be able to control the potential of the electrode which is very much important to ensure that only the metal being electrolyzed will be deposited on the electrode uh, there must be a no contaminant uh, there must be no other element uh, that uh, should be deposited on the electrode only uh, the that analyte of uh, concern the concerned an analyte or the targeted analyte will be deposited on the electrode so the phenom in this uh, phenomenon of electrolysis in in the phenomenon of electro gravimetric analysis uh, the the polarization exert a back electromotive force in in electrolysis which reduces the actual electromotive forces of the cell so electrolysis of an electrolyte is possible only when only when this back electromotive force is overcome if two separated platinum electrodes are used in a dilute solution of copper sulfate and if a source of uh, potential is applied no appreciable uh, current will flow through the system until some minimum potential is applied after which the current will increase as the applied potential increases so the when there is a potential difference the 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 current will be able to flow otherwise uh, when the current is not able to flow uh, between the terminals there will be no electrolysis so the applied voltage which is uh, just sufficient to overcome the back electromotive force due to polarization and also to bring about the electrolysis of the electrolyte without any hindrance is known as decomposition potential the value of this decomposition potential um, uh, how we can calculate it we are going to show you in the next slide so in this slide uh, you are uh, able to see um, to uh, uh, equation in in this equation you can calculate the decomposition potential uh, this uh, decomposition potential is equal to eb plus es plus ev so this eb correspond to the uh, uh, theoretical counter or the back potential and ev is the over voltage and ed is a decomposition potential and uh, ea is the applied potential so with th this equation you can calculate the uh, decomposition potential to perform the electro uh, electrogravimetric an an analysis here in this slide uh, you can see the last type of gravimetric analysis uh, which is particulate gravimetric analysis in particulate uh, gravimetric analysis uh, a mass of a particulate analyte is determined following its separation from the from the from its matrix there are two methods which are uh, conventionally used to separate a particulate analyte from its mixture from its matrix one is a filtration and other is a extraction and uh, uh, the filtration uh, usually is done uh, the particle the, the particle retention depends on the size of the filter pores uh, the filter paper that you are using and uh, if the, the if you are using the cellulose fiber 
uh, cellulose fiber filter paper its pore sizes ranges from 30 mm to 2 to 3 mm and the glass fiber filter uh, we, the, their pore sizes are 0.2.5 mm to 0.3 mm so uh, if you are not, if you are able, if your particulate if the size of the particulate is uh, bigger than the pore size of the filter paper then the filtration process uh, would be sufficient to to separate the particulate matter from the matrix if the particle if the size of the particulate uh, analyte is less than that pore size of the filter paper then you need to extract uh, from uh, do need to extract that uh, uh, particulate matter by using extraction process so determination of the suspended solids is, is an example of the particulate gravimetric analysis so particulate uh, gravimetric analysis is very much important in the environmental analysis of the water air and the soil sample after gravimetric uh, analysis uh, there is another class of uh, classical and analytical methods which are used to uh, quantify uh, the target analyte in a sample so among uh, volumetric analysis uh, uh, acid base titration is conventionally used to determine uh, the concentration of an analyte in uh, acid base titration we uh, this acid base titration is very quick and accurate method for the determination of acidic or basic uh, species in our sample uh, a titrant is uh, typically a strong acid or a base and the sample species can either be a strong uh, or weak acid or base in acid base titration uh, that's a procedure uh, which is used to calculate the concentration in a chemical analysis uh, in in this acid based titration uh, the acid uh, species will be uh, will be going to uh, neutralize the counterpart the basic uh, species so in uh, acid based titration we uh, normally use uh, uh, indicator acid based indicator acid based indicators are uh, usually a weak uh, organic compounds uh, which uh, usually express their color over a uh, working ph uh, of the indicator so if you are going to use uh, a uh, strong acid versus strong base then uh, indicator will be different and if you are going to uh, titrate a weak acid versus strong base then the indicator will be different so different acid base titration require different uh, acid base indicators and uh, this uh, uh, the selection of uh, indicator depends upon the equivalence uh, point of uh, acid and base that are going to uh, react in uh, the chemical reaction in acid base in acid base titration uh, acid base indicators uh, uh, which are also known as pH indicators are used uh, to to express uh, the change in color uh, with uh, the completion of the reaction uh, these acid uh, these indicators are usually weak acid or bases uh, which are uh, which are selected uh, which are selected uh, uh, on the basis of the equivalence point so equivalence point in a titration uh, in a titration when the amount of titrant is chemically equivalent to the amount of the analyte in the sample if you are going to uh, uh, neutralize acid with a base and you are using a acid uh, titrant in the burette and uh, and the base uh, in in the in the flask that is uh, uh, under under the uh, burette it's uh, containing base and then if the both uh, acid and base have the equal strength then equal volume will be used to uh, uh, to react completely and uh, there there will be uh, one point which is important you are not going to mix the end point and the equivalence point end point of the titration is the point where indicator changes occur changes the color uh, it means it means the amount of the acid is neutralized by the amount of the base 
while the equivalence point is a uh, is a theoretical value uh, uh, which uh, is actually uh, when the amount of titrant is chemically equivalent to the amount of the analyte in the sample this is this is the uh, you need to uh, you need to have a separation you need to have a different concept about equivalence point and the end point so the titrant is used in the in the uh, burette and uh, you will be using your sample in the base and uh, uh, one or two one to two drop of indicator is used and uh, after uh, 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 neutralization reaction when the drops of acids uh, falls uh, into the into the beaker or flask uh, containing uh, your sample they will react each other and uh, when the neutralization reaction uh, completed and the indicator uh, indicates uh, the color color and uh, that uh, color change will indicate will be indicating uh, the reaction uh, completion in acid based titration a ph curve uh, or titration curve is achieved by plotting uh, uh, the the ph and uh, the ph you will take the ph along y axis and uh, the volume of the noh along x axis then you will have uh, a equivalence point and uh, this ph uh, uh, can be uh, monitored by using a ph meter uh, this titration curve is usually performed when you are uh, able to record uh, the volume of acid and the volume of the base used to neutralize each other so if you classify this acid based titrations uh, you can classify into uh, four types uh, the first category is a strong acid which is hydrochloric acid against a strong base which is sodium hydroxide and the second category is a strong acid which is hydrochloric acid versus weak base it's ammonia and third category is a weak acid it's acidic acid uh, versus a strong base that is sodium hydroxide and the fourth fourth category is a weak acid uh, that is acetic acid and the weak base is ammonia so depending upon uh, uh, the strong acid or strong or uh, the, the acid uh, is, this, is is it either it's strong or uh, weak or base either is it strong or uh, weak uh, you uh, will be uh, able to select uh, the ph indicator depending upon the category of uh, this acid base titration for example if you are going to perform a strong acid uh, uh, the neutralization reaction of strong acid versus strong base then you will be using phenolphthalein uh, as an indicator in that neutralization reaction the second important uh, uh, quantitative analysis uh, in volumetric analysis is uh, redox titration in redox titration usually uh, oxidation and reduction uh, process uh, occur together when oxidation and reduction uh, occur together in a in a chemical uh, reaction uh, that reaction will be known as redox reaction so in this uh, 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 redox reaction uh, we are using uh, a redox indicator uh, sometime it uh, uh, they are self indicator if you are using the potassium permanganate that is uh, that is oxidizing agent so oxidizing agent are those species which are able to oxidize other compounds and these oxidizing uh, agents are uh, capable of accepting the electron from other species similarly uh, reducing agents are those uh, compounds are those agents which are able to uh, reduce other uh, uh, other substances and these uh, elect uh, uh, reducing agent in the redu reducing species are uh, able to donate or lose electron to carry out a, a redox reaction so if you perform uh, a kmno4 versus oxalic acid if you perform a redox titration of kmno4 uh, against oxalic acid oxalic acid will be serving as a reducing agent and oxidizing and kmno4 will be uh, will be taken as oxidizing agent so in this uh, redox titration uh, we will be using a self indicator that is kmno4 so if uh, this kmno4 will be taken in the burette and oxalic acid will be taken in the in the flask underneath that uh, uh, burette 
so this uh, the in uh, potassium permanganate manganese is in plus 7 state that shows purple color and uh, this purple color shows the hunger of electrons so after getting a suitable electrons from the oxalic acid uh, these uh, um, plus 7 manganese will be converted into plus 2 manganese sulfate so this manganese sulfate uh, which has uh, plus 2 state of uh, manganese is colorless so this color change after 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 collecting electron from the reducing agent these manganese uh, will change its color and this change in color this is the property of an indicator and the kmn4 in redox titration will serve as a self indicator so in this redox titration we will uh, be using uh, the loss and the gain of the electron by the respective species that you are using in redox titration in this method uh, you can calculate uh, the concentration of the analyte which is either oxidizing agent or reducing agent in volumetric uh, in volumetric analysis uh, complexometric titration is one of the uh, most important uh, type uh, of uh, qualitative analysis which is used uh, to determine the concentration of an uh, target analyte it involves uh, the appearance of color complex that is used to specify the end point of the titration so these types of titration are particularly useful to determine a mixture of uh, different metal ions in a solution and uh, an indicator capable of producing an un an unambiguous color change is usually employed uh, to detect the end point of the titration in complexometric titration the simple ions are converted are transformed into uh, the complex ion and the equivalence point is determined by using a metal indicator determination of hardness of water is a common example of complexometric titration uh, this hardness of water is basically uh, due to the uh, mainly calcium and magnesium cations so when these calcium and magnesium cations are transformed into the comp complex ions uh, then the metal indicator will change its color so uh, when you react the hard water with the edta solution in the presence of metal indicator these cations uh, present in the water will react with the edta so this edta will uh, will uh, chelate uh, will be will, will be serving as chelating agent and uh, these cations of uh, calcium and magnesium will be uh, will be uh, Uh, chelated uh, with the uh, chelating agent and uh, this simple ions in this way this uh, simple ions uh, are transformed into the complex ion when all the available cations are transformed into the complex ion the metal indicators will be able to change its color and this change uh, in the color uh, will indicate that all the all the simple ions are converted into the complex ion and in this way you can perform the complexometric titration for the uh, quantitation of uh, uh, the targeted analyte in your sample